Full time from the Etihad Stadium, it finished Manchester City 2, Newcastle United 0, instant match reaction. And I have no complaints about the result whatsoever. I'm just surprised that Newcastle have managed to leave the Etihad Stadium with just losing by two goals to nil. Man City were in full control of that match, as expected, for at least 90% of it. Newcastle did have a bright start for up to 14 minutes, but that didn't last very long. You know it's all too predictable with Newcastle United against the top six. When you play five at the back, it's always to try and get the ball forward, but there's just no one there to get a shot on target. There's no one there to help others when they're in a good area of the pitch. And you look at Manchester City, listen, it was all too easy for them on the night and it was expected. I predicted that Manchester City would win by five goals to nil. That didn't happen. It should have done. Man City had plenty of chances in the match to have made it five, six, seven, eight, nine nil, if not more, if it wasn't for Cardolo. We didn't really have a game plan. And if there was a game plan by Steve Bruce, it was always just to sit back and hit Manchester City on the counter-attack. And I don't think any of our supporters gave the lads hope of any result from Manchester. Maybe a draw. But listen, even that would have been more of a win for the lads. In just watching the game, listen, I'm more relieved that we didn't lose by the scoreline of 5 0 6 7 8 because it really could have been... Man City on the night, they were good. But let's be honest, they didn't really have to get out of second gear. At times, they were just at walking pace. They were walking through our whole team like we weren't even there. And at times, we were struggling to put tackles in. And a couple of players tonight have had real bad games. And I'm going to name a couple. One, Matt Ritchie and Miggy Almiron. Both of them tonight have cost us two goals. But listen, it didn't really matter because Man City would have found a way to have scored the goals that they needed to get the three points. We know that they're challenging for the Premier League title. We know that they've got a lot of quality, but that doesn't excuse us to go to the Etihad and not give it we're absolute all we did. Like I say, for 14, 15 minutes, whichever way you look at the goal when that went in. But after that, we just gave up and the floodgates just opened for Manchester City to play how they wanted to play and to score as many. But we have come away uh, only conceding two. So it's not really damaged the goal difference that much, but that will be further damaged when we play Liverpool and Leicester. Uh, Man City scored their first goal on 40 minutes and their second goal uh, was on 54 minutes. And I have to say, when the second goal went in, game was done. The game was done. We never, ever looked like getting back into games when we play the top six away. Or when we play anyone, because it's Steve Bruce boring tactics. Now, I'm not going to you know, get all angry or anything like that because we know that Man City are streets ahead of us. And if it wasn't for Carl Darlow for a lot of the game, listen, we could have lost you know, by a lot tonight. So the starting lineup, Steve Bruce went with a 5-4-1. I'm not a fan of this five at the back. And I understand he's got to use it against Manchester City, but... If I'm a manager, you've got to be expressive. You've got to go to teams like Manchester City and show them that you want a game. Show these sides that you want to go there and compete. And I don't mind Newcastle losing by a heavy scoreline playing four at the back if we're going to go out there and have a go. But when you play five at the back, you don't give the lads you know, a chance to go out and express themselves. You know, We missed the likes of Callum Wilson tonight. Yes, the lad needed a break. Steve Bruce mentioned before the game that he had some sort of knock. But it's about the other players, you know, trying to chip in and trying to take ownership of the whole situation because we're too over-reliant on Callum Wilson. And when you look at the lineup, when you see the likes of Matty Longstaff come in, I'm buzzing for the lad because the, the lad's been frozen out. I don't know why he's not been getting games, but he got a game tonight. And uh, I will call him out on the, the first goal, but I'll talk about that in a second. Joe Linton up front is never, ever a good idea because Joe Linton does not do... Uh, the one up front roll very well and he's always isolated and that was the case tonight and it was always going to be difficult against Man City to try and get the ball up to him because we're going to be defending for the majority of the game if not all of it and uh, Joe Linton as he tends to do doesn't uh, stay up front he tends to track back he's too deep and then uh, that's what they did and it was just all too easy for them and because we're too deep we were allowing the, you know, the, the players of Man City just to, to play how they wanted to play 
to get the ball up, you know, to the likes of Cancelo, the ball up to the likes of uh, Raheem Sterling, and it was a dominant night for them, especially the minute that first goal went in. And, um, you know, Fabian Scher comes in, Yedlin comes in. I'm not a big fan of Yedlin uh, personally, but, you know, looking at the lineup, it doesn't, for me, it didn't really matter what side he went with. It was always going to be a difficult night regardless, even if the likes of ASM was playing, Callum Wilson was playing. Man City, as I mentioned, they're on another level. And that's what happens when you've got a, an owner of Mike Ashley who doesn't have any ambition. Man City, you've got that, you know, that, that's good for them. But going into the match, you know, we had a bright start. We're moving the ball around well. Not really pressuring Man City too much, but we looked like we wanted to, you know, have a go and try and cause them some problems. But when the ball gets into the final third, there's just nobody there. The service is just lacking. And Man City are allowed to get back in numbers and defend and clear the lines. And then for Man City, you know, they had that, that chance before they scored, which went over the crossbar, not really troubling uh, the defence too much. But when you don't pressurise Man City, if you don't make your dominance count, then unfortunately you will get picked apart. In the first goal, I mean, Matt Ritchie, for me, is a fault. You can't allow Raheem Sterling to make that run, to then, you know, run into the box, be allowed to compose himself and get that ball across to Gundogan and for them to score like that it's all too easy they've had the freedom of the Etihad you know to, to play how they like and to, to score that goal by Gundogan he'll never have scored an easier goal all season and I want to pick out two players who I think are a fault uh, in the lead up to the goal uh, so I've mentioned Matt Ritchie for not doing enough and allowing Raheem Sterling to make the run but when the ball goes across to Gundogan Matty Longstaff is for me one of the closest players to Gundogan why can't he just get back and you know try and help out uh, the likes of Kieran Clark, who's trying to to get to Gundogan? It's a bit of both. It's a bit of Matty Longstaff, and it's a bit you know of Kieran Clark. They could both do better, but then the main problem is through Matt Ritchie. But anyway, when the ball goes across, that split second hesitation by Matty Longstaff, the inexperience has cost were there. The ball's gone across to Gundogan, and he's allowed just to, to you know just to tap it in, basically, you know, with next to no pressure. Uh, bottom right-hand corner, 1-0 Man City after 14 minutes, and you think, how many goals are they going to get? And, uh, you know, you're just scratching your head because you think the first 14 minutes without being a threat, you know, we've been punished, and that's what Manchester City can do, you know, as a side. But, um, you know, what, what I'll say is, it was kind of coming, I was expecting it. Uh, Man City, for me, the, 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 the dictated the rest of the first half. Uh, they went on to... Um, to play how you expect them to play. De Bruyne was put through one-on-one. -on -one. Good save by Darlow. Again, caught ball watching. Two open at the back. De Bruyne, for me, should score. But good save by Darlow to make himself you know, big and strong and to deny De Bruyne because he's a good player and we know he can score past us. Anyone can score past us. Um, so that could have been 2-0 uh, to Manchester City. First half, again, I don't think we had a shot on target. Man City, I think, had four. Cancelo had a decent half. So yeah, half-time, 1-0 to Manchester City. And I'm just thinking, Steve Bruce has got to make changes. We've got to try and freshen it up a little bit. We can't continue the second half how we ended uh, the, the first half. So second half comes around. Man City just took full control uh, from the very get-go. And they had numerous chances uh, to make it 2-0. And they finally do get that second goal through Torres. Trying to think of the name now. So Torres, yeah, it, again, he won't have scored the easiest goal all season. I'm going to pick out Miguel Almiron uh, for the lead up to that second goal. It's not the first time that he's done it this season, but he's lost, you know, his own ball in our own penalty box and he's been dispossessed uh, by Cancelo. He's allowed to cross that, well, sort of cross the ball or square it across, if you like, to anyone who's in the in the penalty box. And Fernandez, yes. He does well to block it initially, but it falls on a silver platter for Torres just to tap that in to an empty net. Bottom right-hand corner, 2-0 Manchester City. Two goals that Man City won't score any easier this season against another opposition. It's all too predictable. We're a side that tend to you know, play five at the back, but we, we don't play like it, unfortunately. And again, ball watching at times. And Almiron, he's got to take responsibility for it. Again, another player who didn't have uh, the best of nights and Man City just went on from there, really, just to, to you know to control the game. Steve Bruce tried to make you know a, a few changes to try and freshen it up, but again, a little bit too late, in my opinion. So he takes off Matt Ritchie, who didn't have his best game, unfortunately, second best 
you know, to pretty much everything. The balls he was trying to win, getting dispossessed too easily, didn't do his role very well. It was on a yellow card, so probably the right call. Jamal Lewis there just to add a bit more pace, a bit more of a little bit of experience because, you know, he's not doing very well, Jamal Lewis. Uh, let, let's say that. And, um, yeah, he tries to, to, to bring on others, like take off Joe Linton, bring on Andy Carroll for... Uh, yeah, just to try and freshen it up to go to go forward, but we're already two 0 down. Nothing's really going to happen. What does Andy Carroll bring to our side? Height, but Man City can deal with that. And uh, Man City, they, they they hit the post. Darlow's making save after save after save. And uh, yeah, like apart from the Jacob Murphy chance, which was a decent effort, and maybe Fabian Cher in the first half trying to get on the end of a, of a cross into the box. We didn't really do much on the night, if I'm being brutally honest. And uh, you know, all credit you know goes to Manchester City because I feel like on the night they deserved it and they really stepped up when they had to. And we know that they're going to be challenging for uh, the Premier League title. We know what our club ambitions are. It's just to stay in the Premier League, and it's all too boring and predictable. I just wish now that you know we could just change the manager and try and move forward as a club and try and get the best out of these players because I don't like the idea uh, that we're playing five at the back and we're just gifting. You know, Manchester City and all these other sides, you know, three points before ball is even kicked. By the way, I'm not saying that we deliberately go out to lose games, but the way Steve Bruce sets up the team, it's making me think like that. And I have been thinking like that since he got the job. But Man City were full value for the three points. I can take nothing away from them. And we're very lucky, you know, not to have left losing five, six, seven. Honestly, Steve Bruce has to be the most luckiest guy in Manchester that we haven't lost by you know more than that two goal margin because yes going into the match there was stats going around of Man City don't score enough goals Man City don't score enough goals in the second half well when you're going to play against Newcastle uh, things can change very quickly and the way the recent results have been you know with uh, Brentford second division side then losing to, to Fulham and not being convincing against West Brom you can understand why I wasn't so confident for the game and we haven't really got the best record. It's pretty shocking, let's be honest, uh, at the Etihad. And um, I'm smiling now, but it's just embarrassing uh, the way we're playing at this moment in time. Any standout players tonight? Well, I didn't think Matty played too bad despite the first goal. Maybe I'm nitpicking, I don't know. Let us know down below in the comments. But if you watch the game back, I think Matty technically was a fault despite Matt Ritchie being the main problem. You could put Kieran Clock in there as well. But I think Matty, you know, he ran more than his brother. Let's put it that way. And uh, he brings a lot of energy uh, into the side. <sighs> Trying to pick some more players out that I think uh, play quite well. There's not many, is there, really? I think Jacob Murphy was decent. I think he was trying. The one bright spark. But players that I didn't think played very well who could could be dropped against Liverpool. For me, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Matt Ritchie and Almiron. I think Almiron's been shocking for ages, if I'm honest. He's been poor. Matt Ritchie didn't do his role very well. I'd like to see Steve Bruce freshen it up. I hope Callum Wilson's okay. I hope he pulls through and he's back for Liverpool. We're going to need him because if you think Man City was tough, Liverpool is going to be tougher. And they've, they've both got equally good sides on paper, but Liverpool are more clinical in their finishing with Salah, Mane, Firmino, you name it. It's going to be a difficult uh, game, but I'll get onto that preview uh, and you'll see that on Monday. But I'm just more relieved that we haven't left Man City with a heavier defeat because it should have been and uh, Man City would know uh, that they play good football but for us there was just no game plan you know to do anything it was just to sit back and to soak up the pressure and we do get very lucky you know in the game I mean there was certain decisions uh, that did go against Manchester City uh, when you look back at it Raheem Sterling going down in the penalty box uh, VAR did check, well, check it in the game it's a 50-50 one isn't it you could say it did Sterling look for it it is a difficult one, you know, it is, especially with the conditions not being great. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Steve Bruce comes out at the end of this and says, oh, well, the reason why we lost was because it was raining. Well, you know, but honestly, it's one of them. And then the other one was Aguero. And by the way, what I say by Carl Dolo when that ball goes into the box, um, no one was picking him up and he had a free shot at Dolo. Fantastic save. That could have been free there. And then he hadn't, he hadn't even been on the pitch uh, more than, what, five minutes? So, uh, yeah, they had plenty of chances. And obviously Aguero, a bit of contact with Darlow. It's, it's one of them. You give it or you don't. But listen, it wouldn't have made any difference uh, in the game. But yeah, second best all evening. 
but we'll have to just go again against Liverpool and try and play the same, but try and be a bit more of an of attack and threat. But you know the the way I see it uh, these days uh, under Steve Bruce, you know there's just no plan A, B, C, D, A, F, G. I am still Steve Bruce out, and it's only a matter of time before our board grow a pair and they get rid of that fraud that you call Steve Bruce because um, no doubt there's going to be more excuses uh, come full-time this evening. So, uh, yeah, full-time uh, from the Etihad. Man City win by two goals to nil. Uh, that full value uh, for the three points. And, yeah, I just want to wish all my subscribers um, a Merry Christmas. I hope it was a good one uh, for you yesterday and whenever you decide to watch this and wish you all the best for the new year. If you are new, uh, make sure you subscribe. They have been going up recently, so if you could please hit that subscribe button. It's free. I want to try and get to uh, 3,500 subscribers. We're less than, less than 60 away now. So if you could do that, it would really mean the world to us. Uh, turn on the notification bell. It's just next to the subscribe button so you never miss a video from yourself. Hit that like button. The more likes we get, the better. It just helps the, the video to, to, to get out there and it helps the channel to grow. Also, drop your comments down below. Uh, who played well for Newcastle tonight? What did you think of the scoreline? What did you make of the performance? Uh, that was... It wasn't a great watch, was it, from a Newcastle fan's point of view? And um, follow me on social media, Toonami TV, Instagram and Twitter. In the meantime, make sure that you keep yourself safe out there. And uh, until the next one, see you later.